click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the occurrence of group 16 elements as well as we have also discussed about what are group 16 elements. So now in this topic we are going to talk about the trends in physical properties of group 16 elements. So what are those? Let me talk about that in this topic. So friends, in this topic, I want to cover a few points related to the trends in physical properties of group 16 elements. So starting with the first one, that is physical state. So if we talk about the group 16 elements, obviously it starts with oxygen and it ends with polonium. But it has been found that is the oxygen is the only element in the group 16 which is present in a gaseous phase, while the rest of the elements, that is from sulfur to polonium, they are present in a solid phase or they are present in a solid state. So this is the difference between that is the oxygen and the rest of the elements of group 16. So this was related to the point physical state and now let me talk about the next point. And the next point is atomic and ionic radii. So it is but obvious to understand that is as we move from top to bottom along the group 16 elements, we'll get to know that is oxygen is the first element and polonium is the last element. As well as we also understand that is the atomic number, it obviously it rapidly increases. For example, if I talk about oxygen, the oxygen has an atomic number of 8. The atomic number of sulfur is found to be 16. So that's the reason that as the atomic number goes on increasing, obviously the outermost shell or the number of shell also increases and because of which the atomic size or we could say that is atomic radii also increases so that's the thing that is ultimately we have got to know that is if we move down that is from oxygen to polonium the atomic size increases and that was the point related to the atomic and ionic size and now let us move on to the next point the next point is about density so what trend we can find in density for group 16 elements this is what i would talk about so as we have discussed earlier also that is as we move from top to bottom that is from oxygen to polonium obviously the atomic size increases but this atomic size increases with the increase in the electron also that's the reason the density of this electrons or the density of this elements also increases because there is not a rapid increase in the size of the atoms when we are relating it with that is from oxygen to polonium so obviously there is no rapid increase in the size in fact the increase is very much little that makes the electron to be more densely acquired on the nucleus of those element and that's the reason the density increases as you move from top to bottom that is from oxygen to polonium so that was a point related to the density and now let me talk about the next point and that is electronegativity so it is the tendency to acquire the electron in a bonded molecule so that's the reason that it has been found that is the fluorine which is the most electronegative element in the whole periodic table and the second element after fluorine which is more electronegative is basically oxygen so in this case basically that is from oxygen to polonium if you talk about that is group 16 element then oxygen is the only element which is very much electronegative compared to the rest of the element that are being present in group 16 so oxygen is more electronegative and after that we could say that is sulfur is less electronegative and therefore the electronegativity actually it decreases down the group so therefore this was the point related to the electronegativity and now let me talk about the next point and the next point is melting point and boiling point so talking about the trends in the melting point and boiling point of group 16 elements it has been found that is as we understand that is from oxygen to polonium obviously the density increases and because of the density increases because there is also the other possibilities of van der Waals force and because of which we can find that is the melting point or the boiling point this will also increase but there is a short difference that is what I am going to talk about that is the difference if we talk about the oxygen and sulfur because oxygen is basically a gaseous molecule and sulfur is basically a solid uh, material so because of which the melting point or the boiling point difference obviously it will be very much fast but if you talk about the tellurium and polonium in this case, we'll get to know that is the polonium will have a lesser van der Waals force and that's the reason that the melting point or the boiling point is comparatively less than the tellurium. So therefore, this was a point where we have found a difference where we have got to know that is the tellurium has more melting and boiling point that is higher melting point and boiling point compared to that of that is polonium. So therefore, this was the point related to the melting point and boiling point. And now let me talk about the next one. 
So talking about the next point that is we have electron gain enthalpy. So we already know what is electron gain enthalpy. It is nothing but the energy released when one mole of an electron is accepted by an atom. So in this case also I am going to talk about the trend of the electron gain enthalpy of group 16 element. So in this case we have got to know that is the oxygen which is more electronegative element in the whole group 16. So in that case basically we can find that is all the electron cloud that are around the smaller oxygen atom because if we talk about the atomic size oxygen is the more smaller atom in the whole group 16 or we could say that is it has a lesser atomic size and because of which since it is more electronegative also the electron cloud will surround that nucleus and that's the reason whenever an electron whenever an electron is been accepted it will try to repel it and that's the reason the energy will not be released more as we have expected so that's the reason that uh, the sulfur will have more electron gain enthalpy and that's the reason that if we move down that is from sulfur to polonium the electron gain enthalpy it decreases and that's the reason i want to talk about here that is if you talk about oxygen so oxygen has basically lesser electron gain enthalpy compared to that of sulfur and the rest of the thing it will move to that is polonium so this is what i want to talk about and now let me discuss about the next point and the next point is metallic character so talking about the point metallic character we have got to know that is oxygen is basically in a gaseous form while sulfur is in a solid form but this oxygen and this sulfur they both are basically non-conductors and talking about the next elements that are been basically belonging to group 16 that is selenium and tellurium so they are basically metalloids and talking about the last one that is polonium polonium is distinctively metallic in nature so therefore this were the metallic character and this is what i want to discuss about and now let me talk about the next one and specifically about catenation it has been found that is the oxygen atom it has a lesser catenation compared to that of the sulfur and if you move down that is from sulfur to polonium this property of catenation it actually decreases and that's the reason sulfur is the only element in the whole group 16 which have a tendency to show catenation and this tendency can reach up to s8 also so that is this puckered structure of that is sulfur that is s8 it consists of eight sulfur and this is what the catenation is while if i talk about oxygen so oxygen can form basically maximum to maximum that is h2o2 and in this case the oxygen can be attached to other oxygen and suppose if we talk about that it's ozone also that is o3 so if we compare ozone which consists of three oxygen atoms and if we compare that is sulfur that is the puckered structure of sulfur and that's the reason sulfur is the one which has a tendency to form catenation so this was related to this point and now let me talk about the allotopy so talking about allotopy and suppose if i'm talking about oxygen atom so oxygen atom are basically have two allotropes and those two allotropes are O2 and O3. O2 that is nothing but dioxin and O3 that is nothing but we know it as ozone. I talk about the next one. Suppose if I talk about sulfur. So sulfur have many allotropes and those allotropes they are basically alpha, beta, gamma, homocyclic, plastic, sulfur, etc. So this was related to the sulfur and suppose if I talk about the next one suppose that is selenium so in this case selenium has different uh, allotropes and talk about that is crystalline selenium so crystalline selenium are basically are of basically two types and that are basically red selenium or we could also call it as the other one as monoclinic gray selenium And now let me talk about the next one that is suppose if I talk about amorphous selenium. So in this case we'll get to know that is the amorphous selenium have basically allotropes and those are basically brown selenium and red selenium. So this was related to the selenium that is we have discussed about oxygen, we have discussed about sulfur, we have discussed about selenium and now let me talk about the next one that is tellurium. So talking about tellurium, so tellurium, so tellurium has two allotropes that is non-metallic and metallic tellurium and talking about polonium, polonium also has two allotropes that is alpha and beta polonium and in this case alpha polonium and beta polonium the both are basically metallic in nature. So therefore this were all the points related to the trends in the physical properties of group 16 elements and that's it.
So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you have understood this video very clearly and I hope I'll see you next time. Till then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much.